Uh, so this is part of the um, Fey Dominion precon uh, that is from Wilds of Eldraine. And we're using the subcommander because the subcommander is uh, far better than the um, as a commander than the uh, box one was, which is Tegwill. So, uh, what does Alela Cunning Conqueror do? Uh, she's two blue and a black, so Demir. Uh, she is uh, two four with flying. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, create a one one black fairy rogue creature token with flying. Okay, seems pretty good. You get to uh, go out wide with a bunch of fairies and they all have flying, so they have natural uh, evasion. Uh, and then whenever one or more fairies you control deals combat damage to a player, goad target creature that player controls. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Really cool. She has sent like she has synergy with her own abilities uh, and allows you to just pull bump you know pump up a bunch of or not pump up, but like pull out a bunch of one one flyers that can chump block for you if you really need to. But uh, at the same time, you can just go and um, attack with your 1-1s and goad uh, creatures that your opponents control. And what does goad mean? Goad means that um, for the next turn, so the next turn that your, uh, uh, of your opponents, their, whatever creature is goaded has to attack that turn, the next turn, and they cannot attack you. So, uh, whatever problematic creature uh, that is either giving all of their, um, you know, it's like a staple for them or their commander that they're not like specifically trying to attack with or uh, their commander or like a really big creature that you are you are afraid of because it has trample and it's a massive creature that um, you cannot you don't have uh, something that you can deal with right right now you go and you goad it because you have flyers so like a lot of times you can just you know pop in do some chip damage you goad it it's now someone else's problem for a turn and then you can keep doing that over and over again and there's not a whole lot that your opponents can do about it. Uh, and then, again, uh, you are playing uh, a bunch of spells on your opponent's turns, and you are just creating more fairies that you can go and attack with. Um, the, there is some limitations here. Uh, it is one, um, one or more fairies deals combat damage to a player, so that does mean that um, at most, you can go three creatures, one for each opponent. So you cannot just, like, go and swing in with um, ten fairies on one person and go to every single creature that they have. It is just one per. But usually, you know, unless they have, like, Ward or Hexproof or something like that, you can't, you will just, like, go and, and um, go to the problem and then it becomes someone else's problem. Uh, so, what what do we do with this deck like what do we how are we um how are we playing it how are we getting uh, all of our fairy rogues in order to do this uh well we have a uh, archmage of the echoes which is uh, four four for five uh flying war two whenever you cast a fairy or wizard permanent spell you copy it so any uh creatures in here that are non-legendary which are a few quite a few uh, legendary creatures uh you can copy it uh, we also have um, tribal uh, cards in here that you can also copy as well, which is really nice. Like uh, we did have uh, Pepper Smoke. I don't think we have that anymore, but uh, Notorious Throng and Bitter Blossom. So you can actually copy those as well, which is really nice. Uh, Blightwing Bandit is a 2-2 flying death touch. Whenever you cast your first spell uh, during e your each opponent's turn, look at the top card of that player's library, then exile it face down. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled uh, and pay and use mana of any type 
uh, to, to cast it. So, <clears throat> um, just kind of going uh, similar theme as uh, Alela that you you are playing spells at instant speed. Um, so generally, like with the exception of Archmage uh, of Echoes and Nimrus and uh, P Shadow Puppeteers, we are generally pretty low to the ground, and then we cast. Um, we have a lot of incense in here, uh, and we also have a lot of um, cards with flash uh, that allows us to uh, play cards uh, at instant speed <clears throat> in order to do that. And we also have uh, cards with adventure, uh, which have our instance. So uh, Brazen Borrower is a 3-1 uh, with flash. It can block uh, only creatures with flying but it also has Petty Theft, which is a bounce spell. So return target non-land permanent and uh, an opponent controls to its owner's hand. So we, uh, if, if someone is attacking us or, you know, is a problem, yeah, you can bounce it. You create a fairy rogue. Um, <coughs> as long as it's not your turn. Uh, and then you can also play the Brazen Bower while it's exiled and you can create another fairy rogue, which is really nice. Uh, Cunning Nightbonder uh, is a 2-2 with flash and spells uh, you with flash you cast, cost one last to cast and cannot be countered. Uh, I believe this is the only non-fairy um, creature. Oh no, we have the wave break hippocamp. Um, but yeah, so flash spells, instants and sorceries, cost one last to cast. Very nice. Fairy Blade Crafter, 2-2 uh, two -two with flying. Whenever one or more fly, uh, fairies you control deal combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on Fairy Blade Crafter. Uh, when it dies, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life for X is its power. So you, at most, <coughs> and t you know, ideally you can get um, three plus one, plus one counters on it. Keep pumping it up. Uh, and then when there's a, inevitably a board wipe, you um, you can drain a whole bunch um, your opponents and gain a bunch of life. Uh, fairy Harbinger, 2-2 uh, with flying and flash, comes into play. You may search your library for a fairy card, which includes Bitter Blossom, uh, and reveal it, put it into your library, and, um, and put shuffle your library and put it on top. Fairy Mastermind, uh, which is Yuta Takakashi. Um, flash flying, whenever an opponent draws their second card, you may draw a card uh, and you can pay three in a blue and each player draws a card. So uh, typically you will wait for someone to draw an additional card, either from Rhythmic Study or any blue spell or what have you, and then you flash this out and uh, you get to draw an additional card as well. <clears throat> Glenalandra, Archmage, really nice. Flying 2-2, two, two. you can sacrifice her and counter target non-creature spell, such as a board wipe, and then she also has persist. So it comes back into play with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Uh, Halo Forager, uh, you may pay X. You can cast target instant or sorcery spell with mana value X uh, from a graveyard, not just your own, without paying its mana cost. If you do um, cast it from a graveyard, you exile it instead. Uh, Likeliness Looter, um, blue and a black for 1-1 one, one flying. You can tap it to discard a card, or draw a card, then discard a card. So it's a loot. Uh, and then you can pay X. It becomes a copy of target creature in your graveyard with mana value X, except it has flying in this ability. Uh, activate only as a sorcery. So say, you know, your Archmage of Echoes dies, or your Obira dies, or your Fairy Mastermind. Uh, you can basically just transform it into that um, as well and you can transform into anything uh, that you want. Uh, Malleable Impersonator uh, becomes a copy of a creature an opponent controls except it's a fairy shapeshifter uh, and it has flash uh, as well so uh, Mistbind Cleek uh, which is a absolutely devastating card I'm not sure why <coughs> I don't think this was I think this was in the pre-con, and it's absolutely ridiculous. 
Uh, as flash and flying, you champion a fairy. When this comes into the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you remove another fairy you control from the game. Uh, when this leaves play, return that card returns to play. And then when a fairy is championed with Mistbind Clique, tap all lands target player controls. So, uh, I actually uh, used this card to secure a win, uh, even though pretty sure it was going to win anyway. Uh, what you do with this is, because it has flash, um, you wait until that player's untap step. So they're still in upkeep, and you can even do it before they draw if you really wanted to. But um, you they you wait for their untap step. You then flash in Mistbind Clique. So before they can do anything, other than any instance or... Um, yeah, anything with instance or flash or anything like that. You cast this, you champion a fairy. And then they immediately have to tap all of their lands. So effectively, unless they have a counter spell, their turn is over. Uh, and then you can just, you know, do whatever you want uh, at that point. So if, if they are just like, oh, I'm going to win next turn, you know, they're being all pompous and stuff like that. And they have something that they're going to cast and they're going to win the game or they already, you know, they have a creature that's just going to roll you next turn. Um, and all they need to do is pump it up uh, or activate an ability or something like that. You just go and immediately just, um, you just ruin their day. <clears throat> uh, Mocking Sprite, 2-1, Flyer, uh, Instance and Sorceries. You ca ca cast, cost one last to cast. Nimerous, um, so one six with flash and flying. Whenever you cast just your first spell during each opponent's turn, look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of those cards into your hand and put the rest uh, in your graveyard. <clears throat> so basically just allows you to uh, just go through your deck uh, kind of like a loot. Um, and, and you're, you're able to, you know, I need a land or, or you know i don't need land and, and i can just like cycle through some of that <clears throat> stuff like that uh obira dreaming duelist flash flying whenever another uh fairy enters the battlefield under your control each opponent loses one life uh i'm uh based on the triggers this will trigger first before obira comes out and sees it uh so therefore you you're not going to get the trigger you're not going to get the trigger from the um, <clears throat> the fairy rogue coming out however every other turn that you are get producing fairy rogues which is going to be hopefully every turn or ideally um, she's going to be <clears throat> um, draining your opponents uh, I kept quickly in here this was a card that I originally had, had uh, taken out but I decided that I actually wanted like I kind of wanted to um, it's a 2-2 two -two flash with flying. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you return another creature you control to its owner's hand. And the reason I kept it is that bounce effect. So, uh, <clears throat> say that someone targets your commander or your rankle, um, or your malleable impersonator or something, you can then bounce it and fizzle their, their card. Um, so that, that's why I kept it in here. Um, uh, Rankle, <clears throat> Master of Pranks, uh, two and double black for a fairy rogue with flying and haste. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, choose any number. Uh, each player discards a card. Each player loses a life and draws a card. Each player sacrifices a creature. And you have a bunch of 1-1 one -one fairy rogues that are sacrifice fodder. Uh, and then sometimes, you know, generally, especially if there's like a uh, Voltron deck or something like that or something really important, you are forcing them to <clears throat> sacrifice a key component of their um, of their board where you're just sacrificing, you know, a, a bunch of one ones. Uh, Scion of Una, uh, other fairies you control get plus one plus one and other fairies you have have shroud. And it, it's a flash flyer, so you can fizzle a spell. Shadow Puppeteers is a very strange card, but it's fun. 
Uh, it's six and a blue, so it is expensive. It has flying ward two. Whenever Shadow Puppeteers enters the battlefield, create two one one black fiery rogue creature tokens with flying. Uh, <clears throat> and whenever a creature you control with flying attacks, you may have it become a red dragon with base power four four. Uh, in addition to its other colors and types until end of turn. So essentially you turn your fairy rogues in which you have quite a few of them uh, into red four, four uh, red uh, dragons with flying. Uh, yeah, kind of funny. Uh, I love the, the theme of the, this card uh, because essentially, yeah, they're just pretending to be a dragon, um, but somehow they are a dragon. It's yeah, it's just hilarious. Um, <clears throat> Sower of Temptation. Uh, this is to uh, respond to any like big threats that may um, you may not have been able to get goaded or something like that, or maybe they have multiple threats. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain control of target creature for as long as Sower of Temptation remains on the battlefield. Spell Stutter Sprite, uh, counter target spell uh, with Convenitive Mana Cost, X or less, where X is the number of fairies you control, and you will have a lot of fairies. Uh, Talion's Messenger, uh, 1 3 with flying. Whenever you attack with uh, one or more fairies, you, you loot, so you draw a card, and then discard a card, and then when you discard a card, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target fairy you control. <clears throat> Talion, the Kindly Lord, uh, it's a 3 4 with flying. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose a number between 1 and 10. Uh, typically, in Commander, a lot of players um, will choose 3 or 2. Um, but, you know, just kind of gauge what, what uh, everyone else is doing. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value, power or toughness equal to the chosen number. Uh, so, <clears throat> doesn't have to be all, can be uh, just one. Um... Uh, that player loses to life and you draw a card. So they have a bunch of very low to the ground creatures or, you know, they want to, you know, uh, or say they want to like bring out the commander a whole bunch of times for whatever reason. And it has a very specific converted mana cost. You say the mana cost and then they will always lose to life and you get to draw a card. So uh, Tegwell, this is the face commander of the deck. Uh, and uh, so it's, three mana for a two three with death touch and flying other fairies you control get plus one plus one and then whenever another fairy you control dies you draw a card and lose a life so i mean it's not a bad card but it's not a commander um because gen generally like one she doesn't uh produce fairies herself uh she makes them slightly bigger so they're they're not like one ones um and then yeah like it's really nice to have her out and then another fairy you control dies because it chump walks or what have you uh and you get to draw a card but it's not like, like it's just not like something you absolutely need to have out and then like you know it's fine if it like just kind of like gets swept up in the board wipe and then you get to draw like a bunch of cards um so uh, and then Wave Break Hippocamp, really nice card. Whenever uh, it goes back to the theme of like playing everything at instant speed and on your opponent's turns, whenever you cast a spell, your first spell during an opponent's turn, you draw a card. So, <clears throat> very nice. Uh, this is a uh, definitely a play on your opponent's turns. Uh, we have some adventure spells in here. I thought I had some more in here, but it looks like we just have the one. Um, but we have a lot of flash spells, and um, uh, along with the flash spells, um, we have a lot of instances, but we're going to go over the sorceries real quick. Uh, Asinine Antics. We can uh, play this as if it had flash if we pay an additional two. Um... <clears throat> this might be something I, I was excited for this card, but I think maybe this isn't like something we need to go. I, like I keep going back and forth on this card. I really like the theme of it, but at the same time, like maybe it's not like super great, but uh, so for four mana at sorcery speed or six mana at instant speed uh, for each creature, your opponent's control, you put create a cursed roll token attached to that creature. Uh, if 
so essentially enchanted creature becomes a one one so if uh, it's like a voltron deck and like they they have pumped up their creature it becomes a one one now granted if they have like a whole bunch of attachments into it it's um gonna be fine the way that i kind of see this working out is like you can cast it uh if it had flash uh if <clears throat> they have like a really big creature or something with like infects that they like pump up that with like a bunch of instances or something like that I, like i don't know uh, like i i kind of like i like the theme of it and everything but like i i feel like possibly this is just going to be something like that might just end up being cut um <clears throat> we also have a lot of like these our sorceries here are like essentially board wipes or you know just kind of like closing out um fairy slumber party return all creatures to their owner's hands for each opponent who control a creature return this way you create two one one blue fairy creature tokens with flying and this creature can block only creatures with flying uh so if you get devastated um and all of your fairies are dead you um you can play this basically forcing all of your opponents to like pick up all of their creatures or if they have like a bunch of tokens or whatever um and then you create ideally six um blue um fairy creature tokens with flying uh kindred dominance create a, choose a creature type destroy all creatures that are not that chosen type so basically you just choose fairies and then board wipe everything else notorious throng um create x11 black fairy creature tokens with flying where x is the damage dealt to your opponents this turn if this spell's prowl cost was paid uh which is not much more it's only six instead of four so i don't know why you would ever pay uh you take an extra turn after this one so this is a i'm going to secure my victory uh, by um giving myself an extra turn and also just like um creating a bunch of one ones that are going to uh, seal the deal uh raise the palisade choose a creature type return all creatures that are not of that chosen type to their owner's hands so this is just a um yeah it's a fairy slumber party but you don't create a bunch of one ones uh and then tag will scouring you may cast it uh as though it had flash by tapping three cre uh, untapped creatures you control with flying in addition to uh in addition to paying its other costs destroy all creatures create three one one black fairy rogue creature tokens with flying so um yeah just a board wipe and but you at least have some blockers or you know something else <clears throat> um and then we have our instances and we have a lot of uh counter spells in here um and and just like other ways that we can um that we're just casting a bunch of instances. Uh, so we have uh, Arcane Denial, counter target spell. Uh, they may draw two cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep, and you get to draw a card. Um, brainstorm, draw cards uh, at instant speed. Like, we just need very low to the ground spells in order to cast um, at um, every player's turn. We have counter spell, we have counter squall, uh, which is like counter spell, but they also lose two life. Deadly Rollick. Um, I drew one in uh, the Commander Masters um, box that we bought. Uh, and so, yeah, there was it, it was an easy choice to uh, put this in here. Uh, if you can control your commander, you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost and you exile target creature. Yeah, we're going to put this in this deck because like we need to play stuff at instant speed. Uh, and if we pay, well, if we get to pay zero, that's even better. Uh, fairy fencing, very on theme. Uh, target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. This creature gets an additional minus three, minus three. Uh, if you controlled a fairy as you cast a spell. So, like, really great card. It's, it targets uh, anything with indestructible. Uh, and it, and even for, one, like, for one black mana, something gets minus three, minus three. Like, that's really, really good. Um, Familiar's Ruse, you may, as an additional cost, play... Uh, return a uh, creature you control to its owner's hand and counter target spell. That's easy. Um, you can return something with flash. 
uh, Fierce Guardianship, I also picked up um, in the Commander of Masters. You counter target non creature spell. Um, if uh, So, you counter a board wipe, you counter something uh, that's going to be devastating to you, uh, and it's f essentially free. <laughs> so, uh, filter out. Um, really, really nice. Um, return all non creature, non land. So, it's just a, another board wipe. Um, you were, but uh, you just bounce everything. Uh, frantic search uh, is you loot for two, you draw two, discard two, and then you untap all three lands. So it's essentially free as long as you have three mana up, uh, which you're going to do. Like a lot of times, um, you're playing, you will draw a card, you will attack uh, to go to creatures, and then you pass turn, and you have all your mana open. Uh, Imps mischief. This is deadly Rollick, but you but in black, and you have to uh, um, you lose life equal to the spell's mana value, but you change this target of target spell with a single target. Fantastic, really good card. So they they do something. They you know either they pump up their creature like to a devastating amount, uh, or um, they try to single target removal something you pay you play you know uh, like for instance uh they tried to path it uh to exile uh one of my cre my commander um so i get to play mince imps mischief and they and ended up exiling their commander uh, instead and i had to pay one life great card uh, negate, counter target, non creature spell, obviously. Uh, opt, scry one, draw a card, great. Rabbit hybridization, destroy target creature, and they create a 3 3 um, frog lizard. Uh, really good if they have like a flyer, like a flying blocker or something like that. Uh, reality shift, exile target creature, its creature, its controller manifests the top card of their library. Uh, so what manifest means is that uh, they create a 2 2 face down creature and then if it's um yeah if it's a permanent they can pay the cost of the permanent and flip it over uh otherwise if it's an instant or sorcery spell it's just a two two uh run away together choose two target uh creature um creatures controlled by different players return those creatures to their owner's hands snap return target creature to its owner's library untap two lands again just another something to um, pay for free. Uh, Soul Shatter. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and plane planeswalkers they control. It's Shielded's Edict, but better. And it's just one more mana. Like, I'll, I'll take it. Um, spell Stutter. Counter target spell unless its controller pay pays two plus an additional one for each fairy you control. So, just on more on theme stuff. Uh, <clears throat> don't have a lot of ramp here, so we do have uh, several mana rocks. Uh, Arcane Signet, Soul Ring, Thought Vessel, Demir Signet, uh, Misleading Outpost, Signpost, and Midnight Clock. So, um, yeah, don't know if I'm ever going to, uh, we'll see Midnight Clock, but yeah, we'll see it depending on how long this game go the games goes. Uh, we do have Sword of the Animist here, so that we do have something that does give us a little bit of ramp. Uh, when equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, whenever it attacks, you may search your library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle your library. So, we do have a way to uh, get some additional cards in here, or, uh, sorry, additional lands, which is, I, like, I think is just really important. Um, it, like, especially because, you, you, like, you're just... You're pulling out the lands, um, so you're not drawing them, like, when you don't need them, and then, like, so you're filtering out your deck, and then, like, you're you're also ramping at the same time. Like, Sword of the Animus, I feel, is just a very undervalued card, especially, like, in a, in a deck where you're just always, like, you're constantly incentivized to attack. So, um, Binant of Thassa is such a, like, a ridiculous card. Um... So whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Uh, and then you can also pay one in a blue to tap to creatures your opponent's control attack this turn if able. Um, 
don't don't think I'm gonna be using the second uh, ability all that much. Uh, but the first one, where like you are incentivized to attack every turn and you're constantly attacking, you are going to be drawing a bunch of cards. And you need to be drawing cards because you're going to be casting spells all the time. So, really great card. Uh, it, it definitely um, <coughs> will help. Uh, same with the Reconnaissance Mission, which is essentially the same thing. Um... But it also has the cycle ability, uh, and it's not an artifact, it's an enchantment. Uh, Midnight, uh, so Demir Signet, Midnight Clock, um, it is a mana rock, and then also uh, you put uh, our counters onto Midnight Clock, and then when it hits 12, you shuffle your, uh, your hand and library, or I'm sorry, your, your hand and graveyard into your library, and then draw seven cards, and then exile Midnight Clock. Sure. I don't think we'll ever get to 12 hours on Midnight Clock, but sure. Essentially, it's just a mana rock at this point. Um, Misleading Signpost. Really cool card. It's brand new. Uh, I I love it. Uh, and it's also a mana rock, which is nice. And it has flash. So it, it you create a fairy rogue um, with your commander out. It, uh, when it enters the battlefield, during the, uh, during the declare attacker step, you may reselect which player or permanent target attacking creature is attacking. So, someone ac attacks you, or plan is, plans to attack you with something that didn't get goaded for whatever reason, or, you know, uh, you flash this in during the declare attacker step. Uh, and then you redirect it over to someone else and it becomes their problem uh, for the next, for that attack phase. Uh, and then you can tap it for blue. So, fantastic card. Love it. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll uh, it's going to uh, keep me in the game. Um, I did throw in Sapphire's Medallion. Um... There is a lot of blue in here. Um, as you can see, it's like three quarters blue uh, versus uh, one quarter black. So a lot of the, the cards here are blue. And so being able to reduce the cost by one is going to be very important in here. Uh, and I thought it was something that, that is going to be uh, <coughs> very useful, uh, especially because like, yeah, like, there's not a whole lot of uh, purely black cards. It is like either blue or a mix of blue and black. So uh, I think this is going to definitely pay for itself. Uh, Skull Clamp, uh, we have a lot of fairy rogues. If for whatever reason uh, we're not drawing cards or we need to draw cards faster, uh, we have a lot of uh, fodder with the Skull Clamp. So we can give them the clamps and then draw two cards. Uh, Soul Ring obviously needs no explanation, sort of the Animus we talked about, and then Thoss Vessel. Having no maximum hand size is going to be very important, and it is also a mana rock, so we, yeah, we'll definitely take that. Uh, excuse me, I am losing, starting to lose my voice. Um, <clears throat> Bitter Blossom, fantastic card. Absolutely necessary. You have, like, if you're going to be doing this, you need to put, like, the, the deck itself is solid in the precon. Um, there are some very questionable cards. Sorry. Um, there are some questionable cards in here, but for the most part, it is a very solid deck. It, it like, it, like every other precon, uh, it does need some mana fixing, but it, it is something that like, it, like it does function very well. Uh, um, but you need to have a bitter blossom and it's very unfortunate that bitter blossom is, uh, $23. Um, they did re, um, make in the Enchanting Tales series. Um, I did not, I actually had a Bitter Blossom, um, but if you, hopefully if you like that art, <clears throat> um, but essentially it's the same thing. Uh, yeah, so, if you're going to go and, and use this deck, unfortunately, you are going to have to put some money down and get this card. It is absolutely a staple. Um, it helps you 
get fairies out so quickly. There's like the losing one life absolutely does not matter, especially because you have you always will have a blocker that chump blocks, um, and it helps with evasion. It, it like it, it's just absolutely it, you just have to have it. Uh, it's just unfortunate, but regardless, like the the losing a life every turn is not is inconsequential to like how much your value you're gaining every turn getting a, a one one flyer. <clears throat> Uh, Kindred Discovery, also a card that just allows you to draw like an absolutely fuck ton of cards. Uh, uh, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever a creature you control uh, of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, you draw a card. Oh, let me think about this. Bitter Blossom allows me, like every turn, I am creating a fairy. Oh, that triggers Kindred Discovery. Therefore, I'm drawing a card. Oh, every time that I cast any fairy or it attacks, I'm drawing cards. I cast, like, whenever a Layla triggers and I create a fairy rogue, that triggers Kindred Discovery. You are drawing cards. This card is absolutely amazing. Uh, the the precon <clears throat> uh, it gives you lightning uh, reflections of Lajara, which is absolutely, like, it's a fine card. You, it's essentially the same thing. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type of creature types, you um, copy that spell. So you get to copy, say, Bitter Blossom or any of the fairy creatures um, or Notorious Throng, um, which is kind of funny. But uh, Kindred Discovery, way more valuable. You get to draw so many cards. It, it's yeah like there's no contest um <clears throat> ley line of anticipation uh hopefully at some point i will get to i will have an opening hand and i'll have this in my opening hand and then i can just play it uh you may begin the game uh so if ley line of anticipation is in your opening hand you may begin the game with it in uh with it on the battlefield uh you may cast spells as though they had flash any spell now has flash and that's so much synergy with your commander so yeah uh reconnaissance mission we talked about it's it's biden of fassa but um yeah enchantment uh and then of course we have rhystic study because uh why not uh they reprinted it and this is a lot more than i actually paid for it Man, it must have gone up. Uh, but yeah. So, Rhystic Study, fantastic card. Uh, may not be as important because you have a lot more other... You have a lot of other draw effects uh, in here, but... Um, if you can afford it or you have one lying around, I would definitely recommend uh, putting it in here. Uh, and then for our lands, we have our standard Demir lands. We have a Bajuka Bog. Uh, <clears throat> choked estuary uh, we have a pathway in here command tower obviously uh, we have reliquary tower obviously yeah. <coughs> excuse me uh, secluded den uh, you may reveal a fairy card um, instead of revealing uh, a, an island or a swamp so not too horrible to uh, draw in the middle of the game uh, I did throw in an ice tunnel, um, <clears throat> just for the heck of it. Uh, Morphic Pool, uh, uh, obviously as a Battlebound. Shipwreck Marsh, obviously. Sunken Hollow, obviously. Uh, Tainted Isle is really good. And then I just, I kept the D Temple of Deceit. This was one of the, uh, lands. We, so we got, um, if I remember correctly, we got the Fairy Conclave, which is nice because it does turn into a fairy itself. We got a secluded glen, a dark water catacombs, path of ancestry, which is nice because you get to scry, and temple of deceit. Um, and then I think a choked estuary was like, I think the most expensive. We may have also gotten sunken hollow, uh, but they didn't include shipwreck marsh, morphic pool. Uh, And I think Tainted Isle was also included. Um, but yeah, like... <clears throat> uh, 
there was a lot of uh mystic sanctuary was a card that we needed to include in here as well there there were a lot of uh car like the the lands were fine but like you had to put a, we had to put a little bit of money into it in order to like really make it work uh then we get to our like what we actually um yeah uh so th these are the cards that we were considering um these are mostly the the um fairies that were included that i decided to uh to pull out uh fairy artisans <coughs> <coughs> um, it's interesting. Uh, so it's a four mana two two with flying. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Then exile all other tokens created by fairy artisans. So essentially, um, whenever a creature comes out um, that an opponent has you get to make a, cop a token copy of it that's an artifact, uh, except every time that they, like, bring out another one, then, like, <clears throat> you have to sacrifice the one that, or you exile the one that uh, you had before. So, at least, like, your opponents can then, they'll play, like, the most important one, and so you get, you're like, okay, great, I have that token copy. And then they, like, play, like, a shit card that you don't care about, like, immediately after. And then you have to exile the one that you, like, the really good one. So, like, your opponents can easily play around this one. <clears throat> so it's like, they play Darksteel Colossus. You're like, awesome, I get my own Darksteel Colossus. And then they play, like, a Mana Dork. Yeah, like, cool, I get a mana dork. And then, like, you know, next opponent plays something else, and you're like, well, okay. So it's, it just was like, well, this is kind of fun, but, like, it's not going to work out. Uh, fairy information, I thought about, because it's nice to get, like, a... <clears throat> if you have, like, some extra mana lying around, you get a 1-1 one -one fairy with flying, uh, and you get to draw a card. However based on like what it, it, it might work better with the other commander but I don't like like I feel like the other commander is not as good as the as Alela um and usually <clears throat> you're just never going to, you're never going to have four mana just open like it's just never going to happen like you are co just constantly just going to be playing other spells that are going to be generating you the one ones and uh, so yeah, you're generating the one ones anyway, and you get to play spells, which is just going to be better than having like one ones and then drawing cards. So uh, the, this one was just kind of like an easy. Uh, let's get rid of it. Um, Glenn Alondra Liege, I did consider keeping, but at the same time, like the whole point is not actually to. Uh, <clears throat> beat down your opponents not, not necessarily i don't know like th the other thing that was actually like something that i was doing in here was actually like pulling out like all the sorcery speed creatures and putting in more flash speed um so yeah like having getting plus one plus one on all of your blue and black creatures so like all of your fairy rogues become two twos uh your blue your you know your mixed color creatures become um, three threes or, or what have you, or get at least get plus two plus two. That's really nice. But at the same time, like, <clears throat> um, it, it, like it was more important to like be work, you know, playing at flash speed and playing spells on your opponent's turns rather than like pumping up your creatures. Like that, that's not the part that that's not the most important part about this deck. Uh, hypnotic Sprite. I, this does, seem a little contradictory however Miss Merrick Glare um, which is an instant and, and would have been nice only you pay three mana in order to counter a target spell that has a mana value three or less in my opinion this is terrible 
you're paying three mana in order to at most counter a spell that also costs three mana. Uh, now you do get a fairy rogue out of it, but like how many times are you going to be like, oh yeah, that three mana spell, I want to make sure to counter that. When you also have all of these other counter spells, like arcane denial, counter spell, counter squall, negate, spell stutter, familiar's bruise, uh, and then I think that we have uh, spell stutter sprite, which is a far better card. Uh, and then, so like, okay, the counter spell function doesn't work, and then we just get a two one with flying for two mana. Like it's not even flash speed. If it were flash speed, I might even I might consider it. On a, it's just like, yeah, this card just kind of sucks. Um, Una, Queen of the Fey. I. <sighs> this would be really good in a mo like a versus a mono color. Uh, deck. But honestly, um, yeah. So it's a 5-5 five five for 6 mana, uh, flying, and then you pay X and then either blue or black. You choose a color, target player, target opponent exiles the top cards of their library. For each card of the chosen color, exile this way, create a 1-1 one, one blue black fairy rogue creature token with flying. I could see the play, like I can really see a gu an opportunity here. Like someone plays a, a tutor card and puts a card on the top of their library. But then that means that you have to get this card out and then, and then pay the extra two mana. Like you're paying eight mana in order to exile a card that they tutored up. Like it, it, there is potential for this card. I just don't, like it's just not gonna happen, um, and it's also sorcery speed, for. So yeah, I just kind of decided, you know what. It's just not worth it. It it has some potential, but it's a very niche potential. So we're just gonna move on. Um, picklock prankster. Free the Fey is an interesting ability. Um, mill four cards, then put an instant or sorcery or fairy card from among the milled cards into your hand. And then it's two, mi two mana for a flying vigilance one three. Um, in practice, while I was uh, um, while I was playtesting, it would be like one of my enchantments or one of my artifacts and that that would get milled and I'd be like, oh, or it would be like a lot of cards that I'd be like, oh, I really want like all of these or, or, or um, you also just like reveal like, oh, I've got a counter spell now in my hand. Like you, and then <clears throat> I don't know. There were, there were just, it, it's interesting. It has its place, but um, I think there were just better fairies uh, to go in. Uh, same with Spell Scorn Coven. Uh, you pay three mana uh, and return target spell to its owner's hand. Yes, it has its place. No, but there are better. Um. <clears throat> There are better things to do with it. And the same with like the, the fairy itself. It's a two, three flyer. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. Yeah, cool. Um, but there are better cards. Uh, and then win, win, um, four mana for a three, three flat. It does have flash and flying, and then you can pay Demir, pay one life, return it to its owner's hand. Um, there are some like funny things that you can do with it where you just like bounce her and then play her again, bounce her, but it, it's just too much. Um, Distant Melody we took out because uh, it's sorcery speed and we have a lot of better draw. Um, consider, I have been thinking about 
Uh, I just like rapid hybridization over Pongify, but essentially they're the same thing. Pepper smoke, I considered getting, but at the same time, it's just like, uh, like you're only giving something a minus one, minus one. Generally, you're just going to be chump blocking creatures. You Like at no point is it be like, oh yeah, like if I had one more damage, like then I would kill something. Um, same with Corrupted Conviction. I was thinking about playing and then decided, you know what, Skull Climb is just better. Uh, and then Psychonic Rift. I thought about, and it may end up being something that we do instead of Asinine Antics. So rather than playing Asinine Antics, because that's six mana, and all you do is you just give everything a, a wicked, um, or I'm sorry, a cursed roll, so that you turn everything into one ones. Uh, you s instead pay seven mana and then return everything. Um, you don't every permanent. Um, you don't control it to its owner's hand, so <clears throat> might end up just going this route instead of Asinine Antics. I don't know, but it is like a, it is an expensive card. Uh, and then Reflections of Ledger, we talked about earlier. Uh, and then also Invasion of Eldraine. Uh, I thought it was fun. It was on theme. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards two cards. You flip it over at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep if that player has two or fewer cards in hand. Prickle Fairies deals two damage to them, and you, it's just a 2-2 two -two with flying. If we were going the discard route, this card would be in... Um, in this deck, but we're not going the discard route. We are going for the pinging and uh, yeah, we we are pinging uh, the da the opponents for one damage. We are goading their creatures, and we're just creating a lot more fairies, and we're just drawing an ass load of cards uh, until we get to the point where we can then uh, bounce everything of theirs or board wipe everything of theirs, and then just swing in. Uh, for victory. Um, <clears throat> so this deck plays phenomenally. Um, the only time that it's ever scary is when Alela is not on the battlefield and you are just kind of like holding on to all of your flash spells so, uh, so that you can make the most out of Alela. So it is like up until like turn four, three or four, that you're, everything's kind of scary, but like once you get going, uh, it's very difficult to stop. Um, so that is um, Fey Dominion Precon upgraded uh, to Trixie Fey. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please uh, leave a like, subscribe for more content. Uh, or if you think that there are better cards in here that I have not included, uh, please go ahead and leave a comment on what I did wrong and you think that would be a better fit for this deck. Uh, but uh, I am losing my voice. I have been talking for about two and a half hours now. We will... Uh... Yeah, a lot of these are just from the pre-con themselves. So... Um... Yeah, we will go ahead and uh, stop right there. Um, thank you very much for everyone that watched. We will uh, come back probably tomorrow and we will be playing some Magic the Gathering Arena. Um, we are, I believe we're in plat four right now or plat five. Uh, and we're going to try to see how far we can go uh, this month. So uh, we do have a fairy, standard fairy deck that we've been doing we also have some like really silly decks uh that are five colors that are kind of fun uh to play with and you can kind of just you can see um your the opponents just like their their brain just kind of cracks uh the problem is that like those decks don't generally do very well against mono red and mono red is just running rampant right now i think it is like 40 percent of all decks is mono red it's just insane so um yeah, we will uh, go ahead and stop right there. Uh, yeah, maybe Una's Black Guard would be a really good card to uh, add there. So each rogue, each other rogue creature you control comes in with a plus one plus one counter on it. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. That would be a really good add on here. Um, but 
Yeah. So anyway, uh, it's been fun. Thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.